Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, a massive juniper. This is a pretty big tree. This is the biggest tree that I have acquired through my friend William for he and I to co-cultivate together, to co-create, to co-discuss and take care of. Yeah, it is a Prince of Wales juniper. Now the Prince of Wales juniper is not one that's gonna grow tall, it's gonna creep and crawl and go wide. So if I go to the back side here, you see this pretty deep plastic terracotta pot. And from here to here, it's not even eight inches tall. So for height, it's shoheen size, but it's a massive tree. And today, we are just gonna clean it up a little bit. So this thing is so cascading that I had to put it on one of my uh, stools here and not my spinny table up there. Um, massive, massive tree um, that just needs a lot of massive, massive cleaning out so the light can get in there and we can start making some decisions on um, this tree and where it's gonna go from here. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it around. You can see there's some dead uh, branches on here, some dead leaves on some branches. So we can kind of cut those away, clean those up a little bit, and allow more light to get into this tree. Now it's fairly thin in a lot of areas, and so um, we're gonna just uh, kind of compact it a little bit, thin it out, and we'll see where the main structure of this tree is. And wouldn't it be great if William and I could find a really nice pot for this guy for the springtime. We've got uh, the main branches in there, a um, couple of thicker uh, back in here, deep in here, there's some thick trunks in here. And so we do have some girth in there a little bit, but uh, a, a kind of a, a long scraggly grower. And again, grows really wide, the Prince of Wales and not tall. And so we're gonna have to make a decision at some point. He will have to make a decision how he wants or how we want this tree to go. We've got this big old cascade over here. We've got this big old cascade over here. We typically don't have cascades going two different directions. So we might pick a direction uh, as early as today, but uh, we'll see. I don't even know what some of these inner branches look like. So this is gonna be a lot of sorting out. As you can see, there's a lot of branches in here that are just long and dangly and hanging out here. And like I pull this one out from in deep, there's, um, there's some death in here. You know, there's a branch right here that we can just kind of cut off, right? We can get some, rid of some of these. So part of the reason that I wanted to clean this out is uh, this thing is in dormancy. Uh, it's in the uh, garage cold frame uh, in my garage, and it's just going to rest for the next several months. Um, and it's a pretty good time to work on some of these trees that uh, we're not worried about pushing out any new growth or anything. We're just going to help this thing be ready for spring growth. So like I've done with some of my taxes of late and uh, late pruning on maybe even some uh, deciduous trees to um, just get rid of the stuff we know we don't want anymore. When all the leaves are gone, we can see what's going on. We're gonna try to make this one a little bit easier to see what's going on by getting rid of some of the, the, the stuff that's just small, scraggly, and we just are probably not gonna use. So this one down here, right there, We've got a couple of uh, tips of growth back there, but kind of weak and spindly. We're going to take that one right off there. This one's completely dead. We're going to take that one right off right there. We've got some stuff growing in the ground right there. And I'm not even sure what that's attached to. And it looks like we have some interesting trunk formation in there. I'll be really curious to see what's deep in there when I get a closer look. And so, this side's the easiest to see because um, of the, of the, this was the back of the tree. Um, at uh, William's place, this is how it was shown in the yard and it's probably not been turned around for many, many years. So you can see this side is pretty sparse, but this gives us a little view into the tree and what we might want to uh, do with it or what we can, what we can kind of uh, uh, expect for a possible design. So right now, the main trunk the main trunk comes from right under here and it kind of goes this way and it has a big curve this way. But this whole section right here, this whole section right here, all of this is growing back towards the camera which is away from the curve of the branch. So a lot of uh, branches crisscrossing each other. Now 
Again, I'm not going to worry about final designs today, but some of those crisscrosses are just going to create, um, we don't want crossing in our, in our bonsai typically. We don't want two branches to be crossing each other. So a little bit of cleanup, get rid of some of the deads, and uh, see what we can see for a possible future design for this thing. Even a little bit today, if we can see some of that, that'd be kind of fun. Because again, I haven't even seen some of this uh, inside trunk yet until right now with you. And uh, I can pluck away some of this old dine stuff. I don't have to use my scissors. And we just got a lot of stuff in here that's just brown and dine. And then we're going to pull off a few branches here and there that has uh, some life onto it, but it's just a branch again that we're probably, we're probably not thinking we're going to use. So let me bring the camera in here real close and show you some of this uh, maze in here. So as we come down from the top of the tree, if I just pull some stuff aside, here's that branch I was talking about earlier. And if you can see the branches right there on either side of my hand, here uh, towards my thumb and back here, these two branches are from a branch that grows this way and comes back this way and goes that way. Kind of a fun branch, but the main trunk goes way that way and that's a big, huge 180 degrees back the uh, way it was coming from. But if I just pull over a branch like this right here, look at all those branches down in here. We've got little ones like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are 12, 13, there are probably 20, 30 branches in here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all that underneath growth down in there. All, or not really growth, but branches that are all reaching up for this light and they just can't get it because this is where it's getting all the light underneath is just all these long skinny branches. So I'm not sure when this one was worked on last, but let's clean out some of those little ones we know we're not going to use. So I'm back out front. And again, right now, I think what I'm going to focus on for the next few minutes is just getting rid of all of the uh, dark uh, brown dying branches or tips of. I think we'll do that first. I want to focus on here for you real quick as I continue to go through and look for the dead stuff is um, back budding. Now I have not had a Prince of Wales juniper per se but I have had other junipers and of course um, working on those junipers many junipers are similar in growth patterns and how they back bud and so um, I can only be hopeful that we get some back budding on this tree when we do some of this uh, cleaning out and it gets more sun next year. But let's look right here on this branch right here, which is a really good sign, right? Because it's a new species to me and I want to know, well, what's this tree going to do? And there you go right there. This branch comes straight out here and then it has all of this hanging stuff down here. And here's a big, here's one of the big cascading branches that we may or may not keep. But look at right here. Right here is back budding. Right here in the crevices of these branches, the armpits, whatever you like to call it, there is growth right there, there's young growth right there, there's young growth right there. So that will back bud. This tree will back bud. If it has enough growth out in front of it, it's going to back bud uh, at some point. So that's good to see that we can have uh, back budding in the future. So as I continue to go in and cut off some of the death that's on here, hopefully the new light next year when we repot this thing, get it in a nice pot, and uh, get all this uh, sunlight shining through here, we will be able to have some more of this kind of back budding deeper in the tree to work on this tree. Because I have a feeling when I'm done with this thing in the spring after repotting, this is going to look uh, quite substantially different than it does right now. And that is one hard thing that people have with uh, bonsai trees uh, working in the beginning of their journey, I believe. And I've had the same kind of issues, but then um, I've also been able to just jump in and take some risks. Um, this tree, if we let this tree grow, let me back up again. 
If we let this tree become a bonsai tree, the tree's gonna be this big with ramification, huge. Plus, this is a long and spindly growing tree that's growing long and wide. It's gonna be really out here and dragging this huge, almost like um, kind of a weeping willow type or a weeping tree, uh, which could be kind of cool. It could be great if we could get it more upright with a trunk and then show this weeping style. Um, so those are always options with some trees. But um, this thing is just so sprawling and huge, we've got to bring it all back and then let it grow out again. And so some of the trunks get thicker, the branches get thicker, and then we have some taper from uh, the trunk on out to the tips where all this growth is going to hopefully happen next year. So there's still a lot of branches on here that shows uh, death on the branch. Again, we're trying to cut out part of it, not all of it, but we are getting rid of some green in the process because again, we need to thin this thing out for the sunshine to get in all of these areas in here, like on this thick branch way in here. Nothing can penetrate this right now. It is so thick. And, and as beautiful as it is, this is a beautiful specimen. This looked great in William's uh, porch area, his, uh, his little atrium of, of trees and his shrine um, to, to all the things that are important to him. And it's beautiful. And it cascaded over a, a, a stand that looked kind of like this stool here. It cascades over that. And that's a really beautiful thing. But if we don't bring this back, get some fresh cuts on this, and let new growth happen, it's just going to keep dangling, dangling. And it won't look more like a bonsai tree. It'll look more like a bonsai bush. And it won't uh, take the form that we are typically looking for in bonsai. And so I think to give this thing its uh, first kind of uh, new, new look in, a, in many, many years, we're, gonna, we're just going to clean this up, we're going to tidy it up again, and we're going to see what kind of new growth we can push out next year and see where the uh, design of this tree can go long term. And again, most of it's just going to be sifting through all of these extra branches that are just coming from every which way. And many of them that have these brown on there, we're trying to get rid of that stuff that's underneath and just not going not gonna to do anything. I've come in close here to show you underneath this section I was showing you earlier again where all these branches are kind of going this way then way back this way. And underneath here, I want to show you an example of the things I can cut away for today as well. So if we look right here, we got this spindly little branch right here that's growing from right this section right here. Let's get rid of that one. But I want you to look at this tree the way it's growing here. We've got this really all over the place, fun branch. Look at the curvature of that. But then it comes up here and it splits over here and then it splits over there. Now this right here, look at that branch right there. This one. See if I can move these away. Right here. Right there where my thumb is. That's going a completely different direction. It's a bar branch to kind of this one. Things like that are things we can take away. And look at all the foliage I just took away. But that branch is just not serving us any good right there. As this beautiful moving branch comes up this way, then splits into two here. There's even another one here going down. I'm going to get rid of that one as well because look, that one is not going to do us very well. So this is the kind of cleanup right now I can do with some of the insides of here with some of these really thin spindly, look at that. They're, they're, this one wasn't even alive right here and this one has very little growth on it. So we just don't need all of these crisscrossing branches in here. And here's one of the main trunks right here. This swoops down and then it comes up over the, the, the pot here and then goes down for a cascade. And these branches in the crotch here are really not doing us any good either at the moment. And we know it can back butt there because it back butted before um, with, with uh, these, these at one time were not there and now they are. So we can cut these off and we can see where some of this is going to possibly go. And then this branch right here, not even alive anymore. This one right here, so long and spindly, there's just nothing left on this one either. And dead on that one, dead on that one. These underneath are getting no light underneath there. And that whole branch, look at that. This whole branch doesn't even look like it's a branch that we are going to be able to keep. That whole branch there has died off. Now, can we keep it for a gin? Ah, uh, possibly. I think we're going to have so many opportunities, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So this right here, that was a cutoff branch. That was all that was alive on that branch right now. Don't know if that would have lasted long term. So we're 
feeling pretty comfortable that we can go ahead and cut that right off and then we'll have just this branch off to the uh, your right our right here to keep for a little bit while longer and this branch might not even last in the final design we don't know that yet again today we're cleaning up and that is a pretty long weak branch with not much going on except for for here on up but that could be other branches which some of it is and so we might be cutting some of that off at anyways at some point and again, I don't want to completely demolish this and make it look completely bare. We're going to, we're going to clean it up like we did this section right here where this backbiting is because we're going to encourage that section to grow so we can cut all this off more next time around. So I'm not going to go too crazy today, but we're still going to keep working on cleaning up some of this stuff. We also will hopefully preserve the energy of this tree, not sending all kinds of nutrients to these dying branches. We'll get them up to the tips faster so they can do what they need to do to push out new growth. So this, this whole branch right here now, this whole branch might not even be here in the future, but here's the future of the branch right here. Again, here's the back bud section, here's a branch here, a branch here. That's the future of this tree. We've got all kinds of green out here, and we have this right here. We want this to back bud even back in here. And there are, there are some branches in here going all kitty wampus. We're not gonna keep that one or that one but we'll keep this where it splits into two right here. Actually, this one is broken off as well. So we'll just, we'll see what back buds in that area with light coming in here. Cause look, we can lift all of this stuff up here and, and expose that. This is all being covered up right now. And so today with this branch right here, what if I just go ahead and cut this one shorter to about there? So I just cut off a few inches, but we still have all this greenery here. All of this could back bud and shoot out new growth in the spring. And again, we'll be able to choose then which one of those pieces of growth that we actually want to keep, we care about, and we want to maintain. And even within this cluster, there's some weak branches in here. We don't need all of it to sustain that new back budding. We just need enough green to push um, some growth back into those areas. So just enough of this green here to make all of this up here shoot out new growth hopefully in the spring. So it's thinner already. We haven't gotten rid of a ton, but I've certainly thinned out some things. We're going to keep working on that for a little while, thinning it out. Right here is another example of what we hope to see for next uh, spring and summer here. We see this kind of uh, almost like a really ginormous pad with really long leggy growth. But look what's back right there. Boom and boom. That's new growth. Now it's not terribly strong. It was underneath a lot of other branches and now it's free. This has uh, a lot of growth it could do all next year. As a matter of fact, there's even back budding right there. Maybe hard to see right there behind my finger there. There's two buds right there, here and here. Right there above the scissor, right by my thumb there. There's two pieces of growth right there. All of this right here is going to support this growing thicker next year and shooting these out here. This right here is the future of this tree. This is going to be gone. Maybe not now. I'm not going to take it off now because we want to make sure that it grows next spring. So we're leaving all of this on here, right here. This nice little a grouping of uh, growth right here to support all this back here. If we were to chop all of this off right here, if I chopped this off right here, this would probably die. So though it's looking thinner, um, and I think if I showed William this now after he let go of it all full and bushy, would have one of those like, oh my gosh reactions, because most anybody would. Um, but we're going to set the stage for new growth for next spring. So all of this stuff, like even right here on this branch right here, we've got this beautiful split right here with these nice long dangly kind of uh, cascading branches. But this is the future of this tree coming around. It curves up down here, comes here, and then it grows up this way. This can grow out and, and, and ramify, and it could be a really cool branch. And then when it does that and we feel it's strong enough, we come back over here and we literally cut everything from here below it. We cut it all off because this will trail down. And then the branches back here get thicker. That gets thicker, we have taper to the thinner. So this is the future of this branch pad area right here. And again, we have enough growth on here, on both these branches here to support this up here. 
Both of these are feeding back up into here with the back and forth and the travel of the starches and sugars here, here, and here. All of that's going back and forth, so, um, supporting that growth there in that uh, armpit area, if you will. And so we're going to leave all of this green foliage. There's a few more pieces of dead branches we can cut off, but we'll leave the rest of the green foliage just to promote that growth. When a tree falls down in the forest, and then it hits that ground level and some of these branches go into the dirt, they start to take root and they form kind of separate trees, if you will, in kind of a mini forest. That raft style, look that up. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a couple of rafts this uh, year in 2024 coming up because I haven't done one in a long, long time. I only tried one, I believe, and it didn't, it didn't survive very, very long time ago. So I'm hoping to try a new raft someday. Um, and this one is actually rafted on its own. So a branch like this was touching the surface of the soil here, and then it just took root. And so we have some branches that are actually growing down into the earth. So this branch right here, this branch right here has boom and boom growing right down into the ground, which is providing nutrients for the tree, but I'm not going to keep those aerial roots on this low level plant right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut some of those off and make more room for this to continue to grow. Um, it's in a dormant stage, so this is not being fed by those roots really strongly right now. There's a thicker one behind my hand here that I can't show you quite yet. We're gonna have to see what that's like when we go to repot this thing. So I'm just starting to see the trunk of this tree now, and it is pretty wide down here. Um, there's some nice thickness and girth to this uh, trunk right about here. Let's show you that right there. So there it is, about the, a little bit thicker than my thumb going that way. So there it is right there, and it kind of comes up and it shoots back that way tremendously. But then again, has this one branch up here coming right back, uh, right back and curve into the front of the tree. Very gnarly looking section to this tree. Um, we're not going to do anything with that until we get this into its new pot and try and test out some new angles. But again, we have some twigs in here that are so thin and spindly, and um, we just want light to get in here to start the new back buds for future growth. And we have three or four branches down here just competing for a, for a chance to grow. And there's, there's life at the tips, but not life in the middle. Like there's an example right there. Look at how long and spindly that is. There's still life at the tips right here and here, uh, but this grows way back here. Um, and it is the only branch on this branch now for a long way because of what we've cut off. So we might just leave it there and see what happens uh, next spring. So what was once big, thick, and bushy is now still big, but it's not quite as bushy. And we've gotten rid of a lot of the death on here and the stuff that we're just not going to need. And we're going to hope for a really robust spring when we put this in a brand new pot and let this, this, this thing just shine. And, and take over some new growth. The Prince of Wales juniper cleaned up. A little bit of carnage on the floor for sure, but this now will go back into the cold frame. Now we can really see uh, how damp the soil is. It does, definitely does not need water right now. We're not gonna overwater this thing. We wanna be careful with uh, overwatering our junipers in the cold frames for, uh, for fear of some uh, fungus issues. So we wanna be really careful. So, We've gotten all the old dead needles out of here, so we're not going to promote any uh, fungal growth on that either, like when deciduous trees drop their leaves. We had a lot of old death in here. So there we have the Prince of Wales juniper ready for its winter nap until we repot it in the spring. My first update for today is the sweet acacia tree that I got from the other William a couple of weeks back, and we put that in this blue pot here. And uh, the acacia trees seem to be happy. So they're opened up during the daytime. Right now they're still open up and then they close at night. Some of them look like they're just starting to cl uh, close up as it's getting darker outside and it's starting to uh, get ready for its uh, night's nap. But uh, the sweet acacia trees are uh, alive and kicking, looking real nice. Update number two has to do with our dear friend Candice. And here she is. Okay, not a lot of video interviewing, but we took a snapshot looking into the back of my van. I went out to the farm to say hello to Candace and check in on her because she had put a post out to the Minnesota Bonsai Society. Help, does anybody want my trees, my bonsai stuff? And um, 
Guess what? I have myself another uh, boatload of trees that are in my cold frames and some of them in the plant room here. And as a matter of fact, one of them here is a raft uh, kind of sort of types tree. It's a bridge of a Portulacaria afra. And Candace, if you are watching, we've already given it a trim. <laughs> so I brought it here and kind of cleaned it up. And so we have this beautiful bridge raft style uh, Portulacaria afra that uh, Candace developed a while back. And uh, so I am the proud owner of this now. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to help to curate the trees for Candace. And then we're going to see if we can, uh, you know, give a few away, sell a few of the nicer ones. And, uh, she, you know, she doesn't care about any of that, but she just wanted someone who could take care of her trees. And so uh, I got a boatload that I hope I can keep alive. And we'll see if we can find some good homes for some of these trees. Um, so there is a Portulacaria bridge raft kind of deal here. We've got some roots now growing on this side and a nice bridge. Uh, pretty fun indeed. A tree falling in the forest. Now, Candace, what's up with Candace? Uh, she'll have to tell you if you have connection with her and contact her or message her. You can do all that. She's really doing great. She's very, very busy and they're looking to sell their place and get a new place and just life. Travel, work, kids all the things that go around life, right? And now Candace isn't anybody that does things lightly, at least what I know of Candace. She just dives in and she takes, uh, puts everything she can in it. And because of that, she has to back away because she can't, she just can't dig in that much right now in her life. So she loves the bonsai world. She loves the community. Hello from Candace to everybody who's watching, who knows Candace. And um, yep, she's gonna take a little break for a while, but she's in good spirits, doing very, very well. And thanks for all the well wishes, she said, for all the people who during a bonsai zone, Nigel Saunders uh, premiere a week ago or said, when I jumped online, people said, hey, Dave, have you heard from Candace? How's Candace? Um, so there we go, everybody. Update number two, a little bridge tree from Candace and the snapshot from the uh, back of my van as I brought a lot of good stuff home to hopefully find some good homes and take care of them and, and just, well, continue to improve my forest. Holy cow. But that is going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. And we'll catch you all again very soon. <music>